think through first everything that we have to do, right? So the basic flow of what's happening here. First thing is your introduction, which is basically define your variables, talk about where your data's come from. Yeah? Can you put research in there? Yep, and you can, oh boy, do some research um, to help back up any relationship you are thinking about. So for instance, if you're going to investigate GDP per capita and fertility rate, if you can find some articles that say there appears to be a link between GDP per capita, other people have done this before, they've seen it before, this is what they've said, I'm curious if I can find the same relationship in my data set. That's one way that you can use the research in the introduction is to just back up your question, basically. Um, so back up what you are thinking. Yeah? Your second step would be writing your question. Um, and this you need to be really, really careful with. Make sure inside of it that, that you're talking about like what the actual points on the graph are. So make sure you identify what the actual points on the graph are at some point in the question. So for instance, if I said, um, I would like to investigate the fertility rate, the GDP per capita and the fertility rate. That's great. Of people, of donkeys, of towns in New Zealand, of cities, of what? And in that case, it was countries. So I'd change that to say, I want to investigate the GDP per capita, the relationship between GDP per capita of countries and the fertility rate of countries. Okay, so, and that's because that's what's on that graph. Those points are graphs, or sorry, those points are actual countries. And same when you were talking about the New Zealand um, weather one, each of those points is an actual town or city in New Zealand. So you want to be identifying that in your question. I'm investigating the mean sunshine hours in towns in New Zealand and the mean air temperature, right? Something like that, but you're identifying what the point is. So that's a pretty important one. And as you guys get into this, it would probably be worth your while to once you've written your question, just run it by me to make sure that you are actually investigating a reasonable data set as well. Because like we talked about yesterday, like if you have a completely wonky, crazy graph, or you're comparing things like the mean sunshine hours per day and how many days the sun shines, right? Those are pretty tied up already. You want to think about things that are slightly different than that, right? Okay, so then we've got our graph with no line, um, trend line. And so then here, all of this is just based so strongly on the visuals. So talk about the strength. So in that, you want to be talking about your scatter. You know, is it lots of scatter, little scatter, things like that. Um, talk about the relationship. So that would be positive or negative. Yeah. Um, strength. Things that you can talk about with scatter as well would be things like um, non-constant or constant, you know, strong, weak, moderate, etc. Um, what else do you want to talk about? So look, look at the graph and just see: is there anything like unusual or missing about it? Like anything that makes um, you not as confident if you were going to predict in that region. So that was that idea of like on the Honda cars, there's only two cars over 100 kilometers. So if you're going to make a prediction over 100 kilometers, I'm not as confident in that prediction, right? So you can look at that when you're actually looking at your data visually. Oh, I noticed that there's a big gap or there's a lot of data here and a lot of data here. They come in clusters. Or I noticed that I have a similar amount of data throughout the entire range of things, stuff like that. So this could be um, gaps, outliers, uh, clusters, etc. Yeah. Questions so far? So carefully pick your line. Again, what can we talk about? What are the ones that we can use? Linear, log, or exponent. Do you 
Mm -hmm. So what would my, be my reasons for that if we were going to back that up? Linear, what would be a good reason for picking linear? How do you describe that? Yeah, increases or decreases constantly. Could, would you need to research the other? Or at a constant, hang on a second, constant rate? What would you ask, Phoebe? Would you need to research that year or one year? No, just by visually looking at the graph. It's not about the research here. I'm noticing that they're falling down sort of at the same rate. It looks like a straight line to me. Okay, so if you had something like the log... Um, or exponential. Again, you're trying to describe that visual fit here. So when I'm looking at this, I'm going to pick log or exponential because it matches the, you know, rapid increase slash decrease at the start. Oops, start or or end of data set, or that it matches the level off of the data. So that was like in the Honda cars, we said, you know, I'm going to pick the log graph because it matches the rapid decrease at the start and it levels off in time, which makes sense because the price of cars should level off in time. Probably, you know, at some point that might change, but within my range, right? And one thing that you've got to make sure you get here is specifically throughout the whole range um, of data. So I don't know if you guys watched that video that I sent out or not, or what we did in class as well. Like, look at it, and if you notice that it's really strong for the first 50 kilometers, talk about how it's really strong for the first 50 kilometers, and then it's weak because I don't have as much, it's a little bit more scattered, or that it's non-constant and it's really scattered at the start, but the scatter becomes more constant to, or more strong at the end, so my relationship looks stronger at the higher values than it does at the lower values. So look at those differences between where it starts and where it finishes, any changes that you see, or any groupings or differences between different parts of it, break it up, and that's where you get into kind of the excellence level with that. Instead of just saying, it's increasing, you know, saying, well, it's got really strong scatter at the start, everything's very close to the trend, but as my values get bigger, it gets really wonky, and that's like your kitty wakes, right? So the kitty wakes data is strong at the start, and then after about 1,500 kilometers area, you see all sorts of crap starts to go on. Phoebe? Um, with the trend lines, can you have like more than one that fits in it so it's white kind of thing, as long as you have one line? Um, yeah, so you can, you know, if I looked at a data set, uh, maybe log or linear or similar, and I can't quite tell the difference between them. Yeah, then just pick one and just back it up to say I've picked log because of this. You don't necessarily have to say I've picked log instead of exponential because of this. Just stick to the one you're going to pick because you think it's good and describe why it's good. Yeah. Um, and again, be specific throughout the whole range of data. So it fits really closely to the trend line. The scatter is equally above and below for the first 50 kilometers. And then after that, um, the trend line maybe doesn't fit as good because I notice the scatter is mostly below the line for the higher values anything like that you can get into. That's what I mean by breaking it up throughout the range. Talk about specifically how good it fits throughout the whole thing. Maybe it's the same fit the whole way through your data. That's fine, but it might not be, right? Okay. So um, when we get into this, so pick your line carefully, and then the next thing you've got to do is, um, for either of those, describe the fit visually. And I should say that's where you want to be specific throughout the whole range of the data. So again, am I things that you can talk about evenly above or below the line? Um, fits good at start and not as strongly later on um, because the points are mostly below the line as an instance, like as an example for you. That's what I mean, like look at it. And don't just say it fits good at the start, give, give me some values. It fits really good up to the first 5,000 GDP per capita and then after that it goes to custard, whatever the case might be. So be specific with it. Um, so you're describing your visual fit. That's a very, very important thing. So visuals is hugely important for both of these really. And again, that idea of 
throughout the entire range. That's your other really important thing. The more you can be specific about what's going on throughout everything that you're looking at, the better off you'll be. Um, now, the next thing that you've got to do is remind yourself there's two different circumstances here. If you have a linear trend line, what else do we need to talk about? Yeah, if you have linear, talk about our value and interpret the gradient. So that's this, the gradient of the trend line shows me that for every extra one, one, or in increase in one, blah, 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 blah. So go back at those notes and look at that. You've got to interpret the gradient. Now, if you put an R value down for a nonlinear relationship or you try to interpret the gradient for a nonlinear relationship, marking it, we look at it and we go, oh no, this person has no idea what they're doing. And so that's like a huge red flag that makes the whole rest of your report, you know, even that much less, less good just because literally by missing that point, like we've said it to a million times, don't screw that one up. Linear, you talk about this. Nonlinear, you don't. Yeah? Oh, don't send me out. No, don't restart. Crap. Okay. We'll hide that for a bit. See if we can get done before that. Um, right, so again, if you have a linear, talk about the R value and interpret your gradient. Any questions on that one? So if you're not sure to do that, that would be a good thing to do practice on over the next two days. If it's not, you're relying totally on the visuals. And I noticed that, um, good question. So for all these, um, for either linear or nonlinear, you should say a sentence that describes what happens. And what I mean by that is something like um, this you know, the graph shows me that the, there is a um, positive, uh, how do I want to say that? The graph shows me that as the GDP per capita increases, the life expectancy also increases for countries. Would you say, would you write that into different time periods? Like and then you could. So if it's nonlinear, you could say the biggest increase is at, you know, from zero to 5,000 GDP per capita. And then after that, it levels off. But again, that's going back to the visuals. But you've put into words this idea that as my GDP per capita gets bigger, my life expectancy will get bigger. And same for like Honda cars. As I drive more kilometers in my car, the price of the Honda car auction is going to decrease. Yeah. So just saying in words this relationship, what happens is one increases, what does the other one do? And think about that for both linear and nonlinear. Questions on that one? Okay. Um, and again, this is your whole dots thing. Like, make sure whenever you're making these bold statements about things, don't just mention what's on the x and y axes, but then say for whatever the point on the graph is, for countries, for towns in New Zealand, for Honda cars at auction, right? That's the thing. So always go back to for whatever's on the point. Maybe I'll just say that for whatever the points on your graph ac actually are, right? Okay, so that that's the, the bulk of it. And you do have, um, you know, opportunities in there as well, but that's, that's the big piece of it. Um, do you want me to talk about those opportunities right now? Okay, so we'll go over here for a minute. Come back up. Is it supposed to be like a lot shorter than the time series one? Because I feel like there's a lot that's kind of like right and it, it just depends. I mean, ideally, we would set a time frame of under seven, you know, I mean, under five pages for both of them. Yep. So, um, this is when you would want to be talking about things like this. So, going back to that general guide, the parts in red being kind of the more merity stuff, but um, I found my appropriate model, which means I've put my trend line on, and there's things that you can talk about, like discuss any concerns you have in the data. So, for instance... Is this before you do predictions? Yeah, you could do this before predictions. So, um, I won't say weaknesses, but um, 
concerns about the data. So things that we can include in there is, um, is it a small sample set, right? Because the smaller a sample, do we have a really good idea about really what's going on in the world? Mm -hmm. Same idea for GDP per capita, like um, you can get in there and look at that and maybe even if you identify which countries are like African countries, for instance, you might want to be saying something like, you know, this is only 30 countries out of how many in the world? and look at that data set carefully. Is it a fair representation of all the different, you know, kind of geographical and social regions within, within the world? Is this sample representing what actually exists in the world? Um, and if it does or doesn't, you know, you can express some concern in that. that. That sample, that data set actually is decent. It's pretty good. It covers a pretty wide range of countries, but you might notice there's certain things that are missing out of there. Um, and so you can talk about that. Like, I'm going to use this model to predict for countries anywhere in the world, but if my data set's only Western countries or only developed countries or only Asian countries, you know, is that valid to base my prediction on for the whole world? All right? So it does the sample. Um, oh, 10 minutes. <laughs> does the sample... Um, Maybe we say this. This is a good way to think about it. And you might remember this or not from level two or level one stats. Is the sample a fair representation of the of the population that you are predicting for? And that kind of brings in that idea about, like, for instance, in the Bones one, where you can break the data out and say, OK, this is data for all ethnicities. But if I want to predict for an Asian you know, body remains, I could get a different trend line that actually is a more representative sample of Asian body types and will give me a better prediction for that. You know, If I was going to be predicting, hmm? How do you like, split the measure There's a few videos on that already. But in your data set, like, for instance, in the health and wealth, there's developing and non-developing countries, you know. And so you can sort out the data, and there's a few videos that I did on that. You can check in on it. But, you know, those are things that you can get into here because you've got the opportunity for predictions to do it all together, but you can also separate it out into different data sets and make make a sample that's more representative of something. When it's talking about a population, is it like a specific population within all the data? Like no, like whatever you're asking about in the country, like at the very, very beginning, back, go back to your question, like I'm curious if there is a relationship between GDP per capita and the life expectancy of countries. I didn't say that, but I, I implied the world, right? I could have said the countries in the world. So my population that I'm asking about is the whole world, mm -hmm. not just like North American countries, for instance. Yeah. Okay, so whatever you're predicting for, that's what you want to like ask yourself, is the sample representative? So for instance, with bones, if you had only male remains and you were trying to make predictions on females, you would want to express some concern about that. Like, I only have male remains to look at. I know I have to predict on a female body. Um, this isn't ideal. So this makes me less, less confident in my prediction. For the country one, how, like, what would your concerns be about for, for the country one not being a fair representation, um, if you break it down, there's only 15 developing and 15 non-developing countries. So if you're going to predict for like developing countries, you've only, you're only predicting on 15 of them. I mean, how many of them are in the world? And are those 15 accurately representing? Or are there connections more geographically? Like if you're going to predict for African nations, maybe if you had a sample of 15 African nations, you would have a much better prediction than if you had like developing countries anywhere in the world. So those are the kind of things you could talk about that, you know, this model looks decent to me, but I'm also noticing I only have 15 of each type, and that's not huge, considering there's hundreds of countries in the world, or 180, or whatever it is. Phoebe? Um, with, like, splitting the data, do you get two and then compare them? As in, like, two different graphs that you split, and then, like, compare um, or? Yes. I think I would be able to show that here. Let's see if they did it. Right, so here's an example here of Sunshine Hours. This person has split the weather data into North Island and South Island towns, right? So maybe making predictions for North Island is more accurate using North Island data than it is using South Island data because we have different climates. I mean, our latitudes are vastly different. So they've gone in there and separated it out. You see the two graphs, you plot them next to each other, and you can see that trend. Look at that. The South Island is all a little bit lower than the North Island. That's pretty interesting to talk about. You can also see that there's two very different trend lines on there. So if you knew you were going to be making a prediction, instead of I'm predicting for towns in New Zealand, 
you would want to use both of them combined because that puts it all together and averages it out. But if you were going to say, I'm going to predict for a North Island town in New Zealand, I'd be more accurate using the North Island town trend line, right? Do you like, decide to do a specific prediction or do you have to predict the, the whole population? You would probably want to do both. So do your tr do you go through the steps, do the one with all the data at once, talk about that, and then talk about the weaknesses. This is both North and South Island. I wonder if I split it out and compare the two, if I'd see a different relationship between the North and South Island, which might give me a better representation or a better prediction for North or South Island if I was going to predict for them, right? So then you can make a comparison. I'm going to predict for a um, town in the North Island with 2,000 sunshine hours per year, and then I'm going to predict for a town in the South Island for 2,000 sunshine hours per year and see if there's that difference between the two. And does that fit what you see in the data? Does that back up other stuff that you found? Um, so that's the whole idea about splitting the data. Yeah? Um, I'm going to stop this real quick and restart.